Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and this week, we're talking about Tiny Tank. This is a PlayStation 1 game developed by Appalooza Interactive, the guys behind Echo the Dolphin, and published by Sony Computer Entertainment America. It was originally going to be published by MGM Interactive, but they handed the game off to Sony midway through development. Tiny Tank has players taking on the role of the titular character as he traverses a variety of 13 levels, each with their own goals to complete. Being that this is a third-person shooter, you can likely guess what you're going to be doing most of the game. If not, it's shooting things. Shooting all the things. Of course, that doesn't mean Tiny Tank doesn't like to mix it up every once in a while, especially in the later levels. These start to incorporate a fair amount of platforming for players to tackle. Unfortunately, that also makes these some of the most frustrating levels in the game. See, cute as he is, Tiny Tank is a smart mouth first, killing machine second, and a far third acrobat. He's really not meant for platforming with the controls being a bit jank and unresponsive at times. That's doubly true for the jump and hover ability. Tiny Tank allows players to just press and hold the jump button to both jump and hover. However, the player gets more height out of pressing the button to jump, letting go, and then pressing it again to hover. It may not seem like a major difference, but that extra boost is required to get through some of the later levels, and the fact that it's unreliable does grow increasingly frustrating. Two levels in particular stand out to me for this. The first was the Atmospheric Reduction Center, and the second was Mountain Utank. In the case of the Atmospheric Reduction Center, it has to do with needing the maximum jump height to get through some parts. Mountain Utank suffers because it has instant kill pits set up on a downhill slide course. That's important to notice, Tiny Tank doesn't feature continues. Once the player runs out of lives, they'll have to reload their game to keep playing. Also, the game has some long load times that make dying, going back to the main screen, loading the save, and then getting into the level again feel like an absolute slog. This becomes overly apparent near the end of the game. I won't spoil how the final battle works, but I will say that it's on a timer and the game isn't exactly clear with what the player has to do. The problem here is that losing this part is an instant game over. That means reloading the save, fighting through three phases of the final boss, and then starting that final battle once more. It took me a few tries to figure out what I was supposed to do, and it was agonizing waiting so long to get back into the action. I wouldn't blame anybody for dropping out of the game at this point. Heck, I wouldn't blame players for dipping well before this, too. There's this one level, the Frozen Lake, that tells players they have to jump from different pieces of floating ice to progress. What it doesn't tell them is that landing on that floating ice will still cause them to fall through into the water and lose a life. I spent way more time than I care to admit trying to figure this section out before realizing the trick. You have to hover down onto the ice blocks. Just jumping on them is an instant death. Once you know that, the level isn't even all that long or hard. But dang if I wasn't frustrated by the lack of clarity here. But I can't just sit around and complain about Tiny Tank. In truthfulness, it is a fun game. While the shooting isn't overly complex, the simple nature of it is overall enjoyable. There are also customization options for players to toy around with. That includes the ability to pick up four different weapons to equip Tiny Tank with, two mount to the front and two to the back. In addition to this, players can upgrade Tiny Tank's weapons to make them more powerful. He also comes with teeny weeny tanks that are smaller versions of him. Players can set these to search for items, seek out enemies, or protect Tiny. If I'm being 100% honest here, I don't typically deal with these customization features all too much. I just pick up weapons and go. The game can easily be played without knowing they are even there, which I'm guilty of doing just now. I probably should have read the manual before playing Tiny Tank, but I made the mistake of thinking I knew how to play already. See, as a kid, I had a demo disc with a level from this game on it. It wasn't until recently that I bought the full game and played through it for the first time. That led to my mistake of thinking I knew what the game was all about already. While that mistake is on me, it also says something about Tiny Tank that I was able to easily beat it without knowing about any of that extra customization stuff. Finally, I'm going to discuss the story of Tiny Tank. Consider this your spoiler warning. Tiny Tank tells its story in two parts. The first is what the players hear and see during levels. The game features a radio broadcast that plays during these. Music often plays, but there's also a radio host that likes to chime in from time to time. He's also joined by Moo Tank, our big bad of the game. They take calls from listeners, answer questions, and provide additional details about the game's story. These little segments are filled with fun dialogue that helps spice up the game. Mew Tank in particular is interesting as he's the one that originally defeated Tiny Tank 100 years ago. See, Tiny Tank is unique in that his positronic brain and AI gave him sentience. That's something that none of the other robots had. However, they gained it when Mewtank shot Tiny Tank and his spark spread to them. This basically led to Mewtank taking over Earth and forcing humans underground. The funniest part of this is that it wasn't even intentional on Mewtank's part. 
Our good friend Tiny Tank is actually a mascot for a company called Syntrax. They were seeking to implement a robot army so the soldiers would never have to fight again. Tiny Tank did a series of commercials pushing for people to vote in favor of the robot army's use. This all happens around July 4th, by the way, so consider this my video for that holiday this year. During one of these commercial shoots, U-Tank is accidentally loaded with a live round instead of a blank. That's the shot that takes out Tiny and kicks off the game. This whole plot is just hilarious to me, and it helps that Tiny Tank is fairly satirical with its take on war and the US's part in it. That's not to say there's some deep anti-war message you need to look for. It's just the game poking fun at the war economy and propaganda in general. That's where the second part of the story comes into play. The player is shown several blooper cuts from commercials Tiny Tank was shooting 100 years ago. That includes his banter with the director as well as an assistant named Frank. These cutscenes are easily the highlight of the game. Tiny is clearly meant to be that cute but smart alecky mascot character that was incredibly popular around this era, and he nails it. All of the commercial shoots have just the right mix of cynicism and playful back and forth that make them a treat to watch. What the f is that? <laughs> you are being difficult. You are being an Even if you have no interest in playing Tiny Tank, I still recommend looking up these cutscenes and watching them. I'll even include a link to them up in the corner to help with that. Tiny Tank ends in a typical way, but with a few slight twists. New Tank is defeated, robots find they actually want to coexist with humans, and Tiny goes back to his mascot job. Except, this time around, he's trying to convince humans that it's safe to return to the surface instead of staying underground. Overall, Tiny Tank is an okay game. I wouldn't recommend going out and picking it up right this instant, but don't be afraid to grab it if you see it at one of your local retro game stores for a good price. And that's the only way you're going to play this, as the game has never been re-released. It likely won't be either, as Appaloosa Interactive went under in 2006, and Sony has likely long forgotten about Tiny Tank. It's a dang shame that Sony doesn't care more for their massive library of games, but that's a discussion for another time. Thanks for stopping by and watching this video. Feel free to like and comment on anything that comes to mind. I'd love to hear some feedback about the game score slider that showed up in this video. It's something I'm playing around with to give a bit more detailed of an opinion on where I stand on games I review. But I also understand that not everyone is a fan of scores, so I'd appreciate hearing your thoughts on it. And as always, take it easy. But you will learn to fear